This is Kelly Hill, editor for Test and Measurement with RCR Wireless News, and I'm here with Tormed Larson, who is CTO of Extranet Systems. How are you, Tormed? Doing really good. By myself. <laughs> I'm doing well, thank you. So we have the Super Bowl coming up. Um, the, the fan festival has already begun, and uh, so I just we're we're here to talk a little bit about um, some of the things that Extranet has been doing to support this deployment. Um, so talk a little bit about the work that you guys have been involved with in the lead up to this weekend's game. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you said, you know, that the festival is here. Uh, for us, it's been a, a, a long process, um, starting a couple years ago uh, with a planning, uh, working with both um, the city and various venues um, in the tri Twin City area, and then obviously with the carriers to identify the areas where they needed to um, improve their network. And then um, working through that planning process and, and deployment process, and then obviously now leading up to, um, it's not only the, the big game itself, but it's also you know the, the, the weeks and, 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 and days leading up to it. And so there's a lot of activity um, now, and very much from my operational perspective, making sure that um, we are right on top of, of uh, what's going on and making sure that never are performing as uh, planned and intended. Now, I've, as I've been talking with companies over the last couple of weeks about, about this, you know, there's, there's the Wi-Fi network in the stadium. Um, the carriers have been talking about, macro, you know, adding macro sites and adding small cells um, as well as DAS. Now, are, are there specific aspects of that that Extinet has been involved with? Yeah, you know, our focus has been um, very much on this, the small cell and, and DAS uh, side of things. Um, and, uh, you know, we work with multiple carriers, uh, you know, our business model is basically, you know, a neutral host model. So we will build, you know, network infrastructure for multiple, uh, uh carriers and, uh, they will use our infrastructure to, uh, obviously support, uh, their customers. So, uh, we built about a little bit over 400, um, locations, uh, throughout, um, the Twin City area to support, uh, both, you know, the Super Bowl and, and the future, uh, and obviously also multiple uh, carriers uh, leveraging those networks. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think one of the things that I've really been hearing from the carriers, especially this year, is how these improvements aren't just temporary. They they aren't, you know, we're going to bring in some cows and some colts and 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 deal with the increase in capacity, and then you know, uh, and and then those resources will be moved elsewhere. They've really been playing up the fact that you know these are permanent. Uh, infrastructure improvements. Can you talk a little bit about the, you know, you mentioned two years about the process and sort of the, the you know, what it takes to get these things deployed in the timeline um, that's necessary when you have, you know, sort of there's a definite deadline <laughs> when it comes to, uh, to, to this type of deployment for something like Super Bowl. Yeah, no, obviously I think that the permanent um, you know, aspect of it, obviously, um, in areas like here where you have large stadiums, they, have, they will have continuous um, need for high capacity, high performing networks moving forward beyond the Super Bowl. So I think that's a little bit of the motivation to look upon it that way. And obviously, the, this, these are big investments to make sure that you're able to provide, you know, a, a great um, experience, you know, during the Super Bowl and, and the time leading up to it. So, um, like I said, starting about two years ago and then, you know, working through all of the typical stuff that we would do when we deploy um, outdoor networks and you know, working with the municipalities and, and, and uh, uh, local utility companies and so forth um, to have the rights to deploy uh, our networks. What make it a little bit more complicated is a lot of other activity obviously happening at the same time and uh, a lot of moving parts. So it's becoming a very dynamic process. Um, and so that's obviously creates some, some challenges. We've been doing this for the last five or six Super Bowls now. So we kind of know some of the, the common uh, challenges, but you always have to adapt to the local environment. So obviously in Minnesota, uh, you know, the winter's a little bit colder and you know, things like that that could um, trip you up a little bit. Um, so you just need to be prepared and, and really be, you know, um, plan it well and um, also be able to adjust uh, along the way. And to your point, it's certainly 
uh, a very firm deadline. So you want to always be ready way before that and make sure that you could test and validate as well, uh, specifically since there's so many different things that are been happening at the same time. Um, from a network perspective, you want to make sure that all of those things are playing well together and you can be able to test and validate. So um, that's kind of a little bit of the process that that, that test and validation piece is even more critical in an environment like this as well. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned uh, Minnesota, obviously cold and uh, that, the cold is something that I've had multiple people mention to me and uh, and also just uh, the weather that there are, you know, some times of the year where things are sort of off the table for construction or, um, you know, or certain types of, types of work. You know, we're, can you talk about any, uh, you know, any challenges specific to, to that market or, you know, or to this deployment? Um, you know, with, uh, it seems like they concentrated on quite a few different areas in, in, of the city. It wasn't just, you know, one spot or two spot. You know, it was a lot of different areas that the carriers were looking to, uh, to improve capacity and coverage. Yeah, absolutely. It is uh, throughout the, the larger metroplex there. And, um, you know, that to some extent creates some uh, challenges just because you're working with a number of different uh, municipalities and, and um, in some cases, even different uh, utilities, um, you know, to deploy outdoor. And obviously you try to deploy, you know, fiber and also attach equipment on um, utility poles or street lamps. You know, if it's really frigid weather and um, then that obviously could slow you down and, and in some instances it has, but uh, I think for the most part, it, we, we've been okay. Um, but yeah, that's uh, obviously, uh, one of the challenges, uh, like you said, there's been uh, fairly large deployments addressing, you know, not only the uh, the area around the, the stadium, but also other areas where they anticipate uh, congregation of people and, you know, especially as they travel and you know, a number of the malls and areas around the malls have been upgraded as well. Um, we kind of look upon these as sports cities. Uh, you know, it's it's not only the, the venue itself, it's, it's the entire city that get um, involved uh, in an event like this and um, we even see that being more and more a trend for sports um, event in general um, you have kind of pre-game you have during the game and post-game uh, engagement with um, the fans and so we become more critical to have high-performing networks uh, throughout the area where you um, anticipate that people are either on the way to the game at the game or after the game. So um, that's certainly something that uh, we've seen um, evolving uh, from Super Bowl to Super Bowl and, and, and the focus on that uh, increasing. So, um, Anything in terms of the, the hardware itself, you know, I don't know, in terms of maybe concealment or, or, <clears throat> um, or, or any sort of unique approaches that were that, you know, that came to light in this deployment as opposed to others. You know, when I spoke to Verizon, for instance, they talked about the DAS at Mall of America and, and how, you know, the level of detail was down to, you know, the screws have to be painted a particular color because of aesthetic concerns. You know, that was an indoor, um, you know, obviously, but um, I don't know if there's anything comparable that, uh, that you folks, um, you know, had to, uh, you know, had to accomplish in this deployment. I would say with anything specific, we do done both indoor and outdoor uh, networks uh, for this deployment. Um, and for us, it's becoming, you know, <laughs> pretty much standard operating procedure. You know, aesthetics, either you're operating indoor or outdoor it is critical. Um, specifically, obviously, in an environment like this where the city will be on display and everybody wants to obviously um, make sure that they, you know, give them the best possible uh, view of, of both the city and the particular venue. So, you know, we're very uh, familiar with that and very comfortable with that. And, and that's kind of what we do uh, day in and day out. And, and um, you know, like I said, we've done these type of deployments for a number of years now. So we're um, very familiar with it from that perspective. But also, like I said, in our daily business, that is a critical element and, and something that, um, you know, we um, take seriously and, and obviously uh, incorporate in our designs. I would say one of the things that maybe is not or is not hardware related, um, but you know, is a lot of focus on you know the planning and the design and the implementation. But even more importantly, is the operations. 
um, when you know you have millions of people coming into um, a very uh, <laughs> limited area, and obviously all of them are using um, their mobile devices. Um, you know the requirements or the needs or, or, or desires when it comes to performance becoming very critical on a network and being able to stay on top of that and know exactly how your network is performing um, down to the to the minute and seconds almost and be able to uh, react or, or do adjustments uh, pretty much on the fly is, is critical and we've developed some tools around that to make sure that we are even more proactive than we are uh, on a uh, kind of day-to-day -day basis, just because of the very compressed timelines, you know, we're, we're, or, you know, time where, where, where the activity is, is going on here and making sure that we work with the carriers and, and they're aware of um, the performance and, again, working hand-in-hand -in -hand to making sure that both uptime and, and performance is where it need to be. Great. Well, thank you so much for the time today. And I guess we'll see how hopefully everything will go smoothly this weekend and for the rest of the week as uh, and then moving forward in Minnesota. <laughs> yeah, that will be an exciting game. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you.